we all have dreams, but dreams by their very nature can be difficult to achieve. That's where Access Credit Union comes in. Whether it's going to college, owning a car or building your dream home, your local credit union can help you to fulfill your dreams. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. <laughs> and a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam Maguire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome to the Star Sport Podcast. My name is Jack McCarran of the Southern Star and I'm joined as always by Star Sport Editor Kieran McCarthy. Before we kick things off, I'd just like to give a gentle reminder to our listeners and viewers to please rate, review and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. It's All-Ireland Camogie Final Week and later on today's show we'll be joined by ex-Cork star Sarah O'Donovan to preview Sunday's showpiece as Paddy Murray's Cork side get ready to take on Galway at Croke Park. Cork beat Kilkenny at the semi-final stage and on Sunday they'll go in search of their first title since 2018. But we're going to kick things off with the big news from yesterday and that was Rona McCarthy's departure from the top job in Cork football. On Tuesday, the Irish Examiner reported that McCarthy was stepping away from the role despite his eagerness to extend his term past his one remaining year. We're joined on the line now by Ger McCarthy of the Southern Star, the Echo, the Examiner and Red FM to discuss this news further. But Kieran, I'm going to come to you first. Did this come as a surprise to you when it broke yesterday? Because when we spoke to Holly O'Sullivan and Dear McDuggan in the aftermath of the crushing Munster final defeat versus Kerry. The consensus was that Ronan probably deserved more time in the role considering the progress that has been made over the last number of years. In the last week or so, Jack, there were a lot of rumblings going on in the background and there were two sides of the story. One was that, that Ronan was going to stay on, but stay on for longer. And, and then the last couple of days, the noises were going a, a bit louder that it looked like there could be a change in the offing. Um, Ronan wouldn't want it to bow and the note that he has bowed out, bowed out on that very heavy Munster final defeat to Kerry in Killarney. He would have wanted to continue on in the job. Um, but obviously the county board have decided to go down a different direction. Um, is it a surprise? I think it is, yeah. I think it is a surprise because Ronan had one year left on, on his current deal. Um, this is his this was the first year of, of his of his new two-year contract extension, if you want to put it that way. So um you would have thought that he would have stayed on for next year and and try and get Cork up to division one and go better in the Munster Championship. So it has come out of the blue, has come out of the blue, but there's an opportunity now for Cork to to put a different structure in place and go in in a, in a different direction. Well, before we start talking about new structures and different directions, sure, I want to ask you the same question I've just asked Kieran, and that's were you surprised by Ronan's departure? And on looking back at his tenure, how would you rate it? Has it been a successful tenure as Cork boss? There has been setbacks, but there has been progress at times as well. So that's a two barrel question. Were you surprised? And looking back on his tenure, how can we view it? Um, honestly, I was surprised, I suppose, at the timing and the manner in which the news came out. The fact that Tony Lee and the Irish Examiner got an exclusive and fair play to them for doing that. Um, the meeting apparently had been held the night before with the executive and it had been agreed that they wouldn't continue with Ronan uh, as Cork manager. So the fact that that information got out and the fact, you know, that before they had to issue another statement themselves uh, confirming it wasn't a very good optic. His record, Ronan's record, look, I suppose, look, nobody... In, in, no inter-county manager has had to face the, the difficulties of COVID and, the, and the, the practicalities of just getting your squad together and all the things that come with that. So I think to be fair to him, um, Ronan got the job on merit. He took Carby Rangers to a county title, something they'd never done before. Um, and he'd done that. He did, he did a really good job there in doing that. And he, he gained a lot of respect for that. 
within Cork, GA circles, like here and correctly alluded to, you hear rumblings all the time. It's too small a county, as Kevin O'Donovan actually said this morning in, in print um, when, it, when it comes to news. I never got the impression or I never got the feeling from the county board that they were overwhelmingly in favour of him going on. There was never any reassurance that that was going to be the case. There was never any suggestion that he shouldn't either. But sometimes silence is nearly as bad as criticism. In my opinion, he has done as good a job as he could have with the raw materials at his disposal. Was it difficult seeing that performance and last big loss to Kerry? Absolutely. Um, but we did beat Kerry the year before, albeit with a last minute goal. But I think that was probably the zenith of his time. I think that performance and that effort and especially the young players he had out on the pitch that evening gave me hope and gave all Cork GA supporters, football supporters hope. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to build on that in the National League this year. We know they managed to beat Clare and to beat Leash, but they lost to Kildare. And that's a team, I think, at Cork's level that I would have expected them to be beating, and they didn't do that. The other thing I think that didn't go in his favour was the optic of the All Beach lockdown, seeing all the Cork players there. I know they feel they still feel a bit aggrieved about that, and maybe Kieran could come in on this. I thought Ronan's attitude to the press changed a little bit after that. The fact that they felt that they had, I, I'm not suggesting that they, they think they didn't do anything wrong, but the optics were very bad. Look at the Dublin team getting caught above and look, any team getting caught training during lockdown, it's a big no-no. Since then, I don't think things have been as good as they should have been. I don't think things have gone as smoothly as Ron McCarthy would have liked. I think the time possibly was right for a change. But here's the thing, Jack, if he's a year left in his contract, and if the county board have decided that it's no longer time for him, they obviously have somebody in mind. Or they obviously have a process in mind. But let's be honest about it. In the real life, they've obviously got somebody in mind. So from that point of view, I think Ronan can feel aggrieved. I think he felt he had earned another year. But I saw nothing in the Kerry performance to suggest that, to suggest that he should. But overall, I think he deserves credit for how he handled COVID, for getting that victory over Kerry down at Cork and bringing in a lot of young players. I think he should be rightly uh, praised for that. But in, in terms of progress and in terms of our Cork getting any better or any closer to Kerry, no. And perhaps it was the time to go. Well, in terms of something that you mentioned, Kieran, in your answer about it's a chance now to bring in a new structure and a new team for Cork GEA. And just to put that alongside what Jerome mentioned at the end of his answer there in terms of the new young players that Ronan has brought in during his tenure. So a lot of time has been spent talking about the rebuilding job that Ronan McCarthy has undergone and that it has been a process and he has put new structures in place. So are we to believe that the next um, team that comes in is going to be another rebuilding job and in four years time we're going to say, oh, they're going through a process, it's rebuilding, it's rebuilding. Or are we ever going to be at a stage with Cork football <laughs> that they're going to be competing again and I know that's asking a lot of the next management team that comes in but what 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 do we want really next before you go into candidates is it another four-year five-year plan where they're trying to blood some more youngsters or are we ever going to expect Cork to be competitive at the top level again how how long do we have to wait is basically the question as Ger alluded to there Jack it's been a roller coaster for Ronan over the last four seasons there was a relegation down to division three coming back up the Munster semi-final last year, then the Munster final defeat this year. So there's been highs and lows and um, lots of ups and downs for, for, for Ronan. But he deserves credit too for bringing through some young players and the next manager will reap the benefit of that. So Ronan would be long gone, but you'd hope that the next manager or even the manager after that will reap the, the fruits of what's been sown the last couple of years. Um, look at the emergence of Sean Meehan. What a fantastic player. Hit Clifford scoreless in, in the Munster final. And we saw what Clifford did to Tyrone in the All-Ireland semi-final that followed. Mara Shandy was injured this year, but he's another fine player. Liam O'Donovan was injured as well this year from Clown Kilty, but was given his, uh, given his chance under Ronan and he took it. Look at, look at Brian Hartnett, Colm O'Callaghan, Cahill O'Mahony from Mitchellstone, another super young player, but again injured. Um, Rodan's had a, had, a, had a tough look at injuries this year. Um, the likes of Conor Manny, Liam O'Donovan, Morris Shelley. They're just three fellas off the top of my head. Kieran Sheehan had to retire as well. So he hasn't had a full deck to pick with all year long. And obviously, when you don't have that, like you're not going to get the best results out in the field. But coming back to, to the young players, 
there's a lot of young fellas now from the successful Cork under 20 team that won the All Ireland two years ago and end up minor teams that have been given their chance now and they've had one, two, three seasons at senior level. So they're finding their feet there. And Sean Meehan is the obvious example. Like that, that, that man was superb this year and he's only going from sprint to sprint and you've got Kahno Mahoney back. So the next manager will inherit a squad brimming with young talent. Um, at the other side of it, then you're looking at some of the more senior experienced players, you're thinking, okay, Will they stay on? Will they will they decide to to exit stage left now? And I would be surprised if one or two did decide to kind of call it a day because you're coming to the you're coming to the point now where it still is a rebuilding job and this isn't going to be an overnight success. I don't think the new manager is going to come in and next year Cork are going to get scary and, and, and win a monster title. But what they can do is build on what Ronan has put in place, these building blocks there. So for the new manager, it's about the league first. Get promotion back to Division One. That has to be the priority for Cork. I'm not saying park the championship because you still want to go well in the Munster Championship, but you still have Kerry there in Munster, kind of who will be the top dogs. Um, but it's all about getting back to Division One and getting those regular top quality games against, against Division One top tier teams, playing Kerry, playing Mayo, playing Dublin, playing Tyrone in the league. And use that as a building block. So for a new manager coming in, he has some very good young players there to, to work with. And then it's target the league, target the league next season. Okay, then let's talk about some of the candidates that may or may not come in for this two decade long rebuilding job as as <laughs> as it's as it's starting to to look like. And again, according to the examiner's reporting yesterday, Bobby O'Dwyer seems to be the consensus choice. He was a selector on Ronan McCarthy's backroom team this year and he guided the Cork Miners to the All-Ireland title back in 2019. So, Jur, I want to come to you on the potential appointment of Bobby O'Dwyer first. Firstly, do you think it is likely to happen? And secondly, do you think it would be a good appointment if it were to come to pass? I think uh, Bobby's name wasn't mentioned in that report without good reason and the picture set front and center i think we all know how the media works at this stage i think there's a very good chance that he's he's the front runner in my opinion um he's he's the front runner with the county board i would imagine and that's just my opinion not the southern stars my own opinion um bobby is a very very good coach he has cultivated a very good high performance and winning environment in the grade he's been working at i think he's been a loyal servant to cartier he's, he's well respected he has all the credentials to get, to be given the job so I think he will be given it. Who should be given it? Keith Ricken. Keith Ricken should be given the job. Why? Because look at what he has done with next to nothing in terms of raw material and the manner in which he's done it, both at underage and at adult level as well in the Cork Senior Football Championship at various times with CIT, you know, Munster, whatever they're called, Munster University. Um, everybody keeps telling me to shut up when I say this because they said he's, he's already said he's not going to take it. He doesn't want it. How many times do you have to be told, Joe? Well, I asked him the question not long before the under 20 job came up, would you take the under 20 job? And he said, absolutely no way. I'm not taking it. I don't have the time. He said the exact same now this time around. So I would say just watch this space. And I think maybe, just maybe the county board are thinking the same thing because no disrespect to Bobby O'Dwyer. I'm not comparing the two of them here. But if you were asking me right now, what does Cork need? What does Cork senior football need? It needs Keith Ricken in some sure, capacity. Sure, just to stick with the Keith Ricken angle then for a moment because mm. obviously what we've been speaking about throughout this chat so far has been the potential in this Cork panel especially with the younger players who've come through over the last number of seasons and Keith Ricken would likely be a popular choice among those younger mm. players because he seems to have the Midas touch when it comes to getting the best out of said younger players. Yes, and that, that's the key point, Jack. I think a lot of the younger players have worked with him and respect him, but I think a lot of the older players respect what he's done as well. But you could say the same for Bobby O'Dwyer, to be fair. You could say the same for Bobby O'Dwyer. So in that regard, I'm basing my my analogy, and I've had a good think about it. I, I just think right now what Cork need is not is an injection of enthusiasm, is an injection of self-belief, because look at it. For, if you just step back for a second, like Kieran alluded to there, in fairness to Ronald McCarthy, look at the number of injuries we've experienced over the last couple of years. Look at the number of quality players. Now, out of any under-20 team, you'll be lucky to get five, six, maybe seven into a senior team, and then it takes them two years. But already, you can see the shoots. Already, you can see those players that they would be able to come in and do a job for Cork. Would I like Keith Ricken to get the job? Absolutely. Do I think 
um, Bobby Dwyer will get it. I actually do. But here's the other thing. Who's the wild card on the outside that we haven't spoken about? And just very quickly, Tommaso O'Shea took up a role with the Offaly GA. He signed up for Michael Dignan and sold it to him. Obviously, there's money from Shane Lowry in the background. But why did Tommaso O'Shea take that job? He sees the under-20 potential. I've seen him firsthand. They're a brilliant team. He sees the popularity of football again in Offaly, and there's something to build on. And he sees a progress probably over the next couple of years. I think this Cork job is actually quite attractive albeit the results have not been good and performances haven't been up to scratch, it's still a hugely attractive job. So if the county board were serious about giving it to the best possible candidate, they should be looking outside the county bones, not at Tommaso O'Shea. I don't see a Kerryman getting it for obvious reasons because there are arch rivals. But Jimmy McGuinness is out there. You know, Kieran McGuinness is up in Armagh. Would somebody from outside the county come in with a fresh, fresh look at it? from blank canvas and go for it straight away and, and, and do something different because it's no disrespect to the Cork coaches or managers that are currently in the county. It's really not when I say this, but we need to do something different. We've been doing the same thing over and over again for the last few years. It's been another Cork manager, another Cork manager. Why not try it? What have we got to lose? If we, if, if we want to develop and if we want to finally take Kerry on on an, even play, on an even playing pitch, you know, with a team that's capable of beating them, we have to do something different. We have to do something radical. Offaly are doing it. Other counties are doing it. They're taking somebody and they're paying them. Granted, no, the finances could be a restriction with the way Cork GA is at the moment. But is this not the time? Is this not the CEO and Kevin O'Donovan to do something radical? He's already done it with shaking up the championships and fair play to him. Look at the look at the look what we've got. We've got good quality football at club level. It's no disrespect. I just finished the point. It's no disrespect to say I think this job should go to somebody outside the county. What I'm saying is we should be looking at every potential candidate and it should not just be a, a, a committee made up of Cork, you know, GA representatives like Connor Coon and all those people are very good people and they know what they're doing. But why not? What have we got to lose? If Jimmy McGuinness was interested in the Cork job, would you not want to see for two years what he's capable of doing with it? If we beat Kerry, would, everybody, would anyone actually care in Cork if we won a football or Ireland where the coach came from? That's a real question. And I also think there's a lot of other wildcard candidates out there. John Cleary, Shane Ronan, people like those. If he fits third, if he doesn't, if he doesn't take back the, the Cork ladies' job. There's a lot of good people in Cork, a lot of good coaches. Why not try something radical? Yeah, well, uh, Kieran, I'm going to come to you on that because obviously the likes of Jimmy McGuinness would be box office and I think sales of the Southern Star would go through the roof on a day he was down in Skibbereen to check out the local football action. But... Kieran, jurors turn out some very interesting names there. Obviously, we touched on Bobby O'Dwyer, who seems to be the consensus choice, as we said. Keith Ricken would be a popular choice amongst the young players. <laughs> Jimmy McGuinness, Kieran McGinney was even thrown in there. Shane Renane. One he didn't mention was Kerry's Jack O'Connor, who's just stepped down from the Kildare job, and I think that would be very left field, and I can't see that one happening. But just give us your own thoughts, basically, on all those names mentioned and where you think Cork are likely to go. Um, when you're looking at the contenders for this job, it's almost a usual suspect. So I was looking at, at the list of names. You would have John Cleary of Castellaven mentioned, and he was in the, in the, the reckoning twice before. Um, Ify Fitzgerald will be mentioned. He's a Cork Ladies football manager, but like Joe alluded to there, maybe something could happen in the offer there for, for Ify would put his name forward for, for, for this job. Obviously, Bobby O'Dwyer is, seems to be the front runner right now. He seems to be this be the, 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 the man in pole position, but we haven't heard from him yet. Does, does he want the job? Um, uh, Keith Ricken, but you can see they're all very, very familiar names. Another name mentioned was John Finton Daly, who's doing a great job with Knock Degree. Um, he's had a superb success record at club level over, over the last number of years. He's a very passionate GM and a very knowledgeable GM, and too. Um, I think he was interviewed for the job before. So John Finton is someone who might say to the county board, hand up. I, I interview me, I want to put forward my ideas and tell you for what I can do. Um, should Cork look outside the county? Of course they should. Jesus, of course they should. Um, they need to get the best possible manner, manager for this job. And like George said there, this is a fierce, attractive job. We mentioned some of the young players there. One fella I never mentioned was Connor Corbett. He got injured earlier in the year for the Cork under 20s. My God, that young fella is so talented. And when he breaks on that scene, we'll all hear about it as well. So... There's a crop of talent coming through in Cork football. Um, it's already starting to come through, like I mentioned the names already, and there's more to come as well. Like um, the Cork Miners and the Cork under 20s both won Munster this year. So there's now a conveyor belt of talent that's going to feed the senior team over the next couple of years. So you want the best possible men and the best possible management team, which is quite important, to harvest that talent. 
maybe it could be something off the top of my head where you bring in a Donny Buckley, who's a Kerry coach, and partner him with a Cork manager. Maybe something like that. Donny is someone who's done great stuff in Kerry. I think he's gone up to Mayo, done great stuff as well. Really top class coach. And um, I know he's kind of he's done coaching sessions in different Cork clubs over the years, and they've always been highly impressed with him. So maybe that's a way to go. But with Kevin O'Donovan, the, the Cork CEO, Cork secretary, he's not afraid to make the hard decisions. He's made some great decisions over the last couple of years. He's he has Cork GA and um, pointing forward right now. Um, they put the subcommittee together. Um, so you have Kevin O'Donovan on it. You've the vice chairperson Pat Horgan. You've Connor Coonahan, who's the the county director of football, and you've Noel O'Callaghan, who's the development officer. So they are the men charged with this appointment, and they're under pressure. To be quite honest, they have to get this right because. Cork football cannot afford another couple of years in, in the doldrums, drifting between Division 2, going on Division 3, coming back up. With the talent that they have, they need to kick on now. And with the hurlers going well as well, Cork football really needs to kick on because when Cork hurling is going well, the Cork footballers can be forgotten. And there is a danger of that. So this is a chance to put the Cork footballers back in the limelight again, get a bit of positivity behind them and build towards... Um, the, the next season because there there is talented players there are talented players in Cork just for example I was in, in Bandon on, on Saturday at the Premier Senior Football game between Aero Oak and Carberry Rangers and Aero Oak who were new up to the Senior A football their centre-back John Cooper was outstanding on the day and I've heard good reports about him in, in the last couple of seasons and just to see him in action he, he was marking John O'Rourke he turned John O'Rourke around John O'Rourke didn't have that much of an influence on the game and Cooper was very strong going forward. That's not to put too much pressure on him. It's only one game, of course. But you're thinking, there is talent here. Um, I was in Ross Carberry dinner on, on Sunday and Thomas Clancy, who was in the Cork Senior Football Panel before, he was playing full back. He kept Stephen Leonard scoreless throughout the entire game and had a strong game. And he's someone, if he was approached again, I think he could be open to the possibility of getting back into the Cork Senior Football Panel. He's a big, strong physical defender. He's what, 29, 30 now. Um, you'd still get something out of him. Um, Colin O'Callaghan played quite well for Aero Oak on, on Saturday. Uh, Ronan O'Toole had a good game in midfield. So there is talent out there. There's some talented footballers in Cork right now. So it's an attractive job. And hopefully the right man will get that job because it, it, it's quite exciting, the possibility, if the right person has it and the right management team has it. OK, well, you've both called it an attractive job. So I'm going to put you both in the position of head of the Cork GAA sure. committee, right? And, Joe, I'm going to come to you first. I want you to pick your manager if you had final say and what you would expect from a new management setup if they're given, we'll say, a three-year term, because if this job, I know this, this is like an impossible, I'm just asking you to guess the future, but just humour me, what could be expected of a new Cork manager and who is your new Cork manager? Well, for a three-year contract, um, I would expect, um, I, I, I really would, I think the most realistic, probably, even though I mentioned Jimmy Guinness, just as an, just as an idea from outside the county, I think Keith Ricken would be my choice. And I would like Keith Rickon to be given a three-year contract with the proviso that promotion would have to be gained to the first up to the top division within two years and that we would win a Munster Championship in the third year. I think that's a realistic goal and anything before that would be a bonus. I'm looking at not just the under-20s coming through, I'm also looking at the minors that would be there in three years' time and the kind of team that Cork will have um, under Keith's guidance and the kind of management team he put together and had all that success with, I think Cork would benefit from his knowledge. I think they'd benefit from the people Keith surround himself with. And he'd also play a style of football that if Cork came up short, would still be uh, a good thing to look at. And I think supporters could get behind. And in a young, raw team in that three-year spell certainly could would have a great chance of success with him. So Keith Ricken, promotion within two and a Munster Championship and probably challenging for the latter stages of the All-Ireland in year three. I think any Cork fan would think of that scenario of being back in Division 1 and a Munster title within three years and be very happy. So I think Jor is now in the running to be taking over as <laughs> Cork GAA CEO. But, um, but Kieran, same question to you. Who's your pick and what do you think should be expected of the next Cork management team? That was a fierce, impressive answer by George. So I don't know how, yeah. how, how I'm going to follow that one up. Um, like I alluded to earlier as well, I think it's more about the management team rather than almost the manager as well. In this, if you look at the Limerick hurlers, 
John Kiley, terrific manager, to look at a team he put in place around him. And I think even since they won the All-Ireland, have a couple of the men in, uh, of his team, had they gone to Munster Rugby, up to Ulster and so on. So it's the quality of people that you put around you as well. Good things are said about Bobby Dwyer. He's fierce organised. He's a really good organiser of people. Um, but it depends who they surround themselves with. Who my choice is right now, to be honest, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm trying to find out as we speak if different candidates are interested in putting their name forward. So um, hopefully we'll have more in, in Thursday's Southern Star. Keith Rickon is a saving good Saving the exclusive. He's saving the exclusive, chair. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just trying to find out. And I've, I think you're looking at, a, like Keith Rickon has said before, yeah, he doesn't want the top job. But like George said, he when, when that job is offered to you, it's a hard one to say no to. Um, John Cleary was in twice before. Has his time come and gone? Maybe so. Even though he's still involved with Castlehaven, he had he was interested a couple couple of times before. Um, Bible Dwyer looks a front runner for a reason. He's been in with the the Cork senior football team this past season. He knows the young fellas from his work with the minors. Um, he's a good link man between the that underage setup and and the senior setup. So I can hundred percent see the merits in 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 Bobby getting it. Um, but again, it comes down to the management team. So if you'd have pushed me right now, just going on what, what we've seen, it looks like Bobby is, is the front runner, but it all depends who he surrounds himself with. Well, final point, and then before we wrap up, a name Kieran mentioned earlier was Kerry coach Donny Buckley. Another name that's been floated is Kerry legend Jack O'Connor. And Jory, you mentioned that the idea of a Kerry name being inside and involved doesn't really float your boat and i think i would pretty much be in agreement because for example could you ever see a tipperary hurling man taking over at kilkenny or vice versa it just doesn't seem something that would fly with me so from the point of view of cork supporters do you think they could get behind a team which involved carry people <laughs> whisper it carry people in control of their beloved football team no, I'm taking the hate mail on this podcast so for this answer is that's fair enough um, yeah. <laughs> I, I level with you Jack I level with you it wouldn't bother me where okay. a coach is from or where a physio is from or where a manager is from if we got success and I think over time I think times are changing in the GA but everything in the GA changes at a snail's pace but if Tommaso Shea goes up to Offaly and does fantastic work there and they win a Leinster championship out of nowhere would anybody care? When Paddy O'Shea went up to Westmead, when when Mick O'Dwyer went to Kildare, nobody cared because look what happened. They won, they won, they won. They were successful and the whole county got behind them. Cork and Kerry's rivalry trumps all that. I agree with you. And it's the same. It's a good analogy between Tip and Kilkenny. Personally, if Jack O'Connor was interested in the Cork senior football job, he should be at least interviewed. He should be at least interviewed to get his views and his thoughts on it. It would be an incredibly hard sell. But I don't care where you're from. I don't care what your accent sounds like. All I care about is Kieran rightly said, who are you going to surround yourself with? What are you going to do for us? And if we're successful, does it really matter? This is why I keep bringing up the coaches from outside the county, because it doesn't matter if you're successful. People forget very quickly. Um, would, should it be a Cork uh, coach and a senior manager and a backroom team? Absolutely, it should, because you're trying to cultivate your coaching talent through your county. I get that. I understand that. But we're living in a time where Cork need to get going. They can't be left behind, like Kieran said. And there's, every year we don't get closer to Kerry. That happens. So from a financial standpoint for the county board, for Cork football's health and well-being, I don't care where the manager's from. I don't care where the backroom team is from. If Just make us successful. Just make us successful. So if Jack O'Connor was interested in it, which I think he might be, um, I still think, that, yeah, the barrier with the Cork, the, the his, history between Cork and Kerry would stop him and prevent him from getting it. But the likes of Tony Buckley and all these other people that are out there that are strength conditioning, that are coaches, that have good credentials, get them in. If it makes us a better football team, if it gives us a better chance of success, get them in because I don't care where you're from. Okay, Kieran, final point on this then, and a name that we haven't mentioned yet, but who has been involved with the Cork setup over the last number of years is Keen O'Neill. I don't think he's in contention to take over the job, but where does he stand? Because he seemed like a popular figure amongst the players. Could you envisage a new head honcho coming in and keeping Keen O'Neill on the ticket, or has his time with Cork come to an end? That's an interesting one. It was Ronan who approached Keen O'Neill a couple of years back to, to bring him in as a coach. And I did a, an interview with, with Keen last year and I asked him, Would you like to be an intercounty manager again? And he said at the time, No. He said he enjoys coaching. So 
I can't see him putting his name forward for this. I, I don't think he'd want all the extra work that comes with being an inter-county manager. And um, he just wants to coach. Um, it, it would be up to the new manager to decide whether he'd want Keen O'Neill involved or not. I know I know the players are very happy, and um, I was talking a couple, a couple before about about Keen O'Neill and what he brought to training and so on and, and how he and how he directs training. Um, but again, it's up to, it'll be up to the new manager to decide whether he wants to keep Keen O'Neill and that continuity of the last couple of years or decide to go a kind of a fresh way. Um, what was all it was kind of visible at games a lot of the time was it was Ronan and Keen um nearly all the time on the sideline. And um, you have obviously the other selectors involved as well, but you always said and Ronan and Keen. And Keen was very, very vocal on the sideline, kind of telling players what to do and directing them on the pitch and so on. So um, if now that Ronan has gone, maybe Keen will think, uh, again, I don't know. Okay, it's my time to exit stage left as well. It all depends what direction the county board want to go and who they, they want to bring in. But as for Keen O'Neill as, as manager, no, I don't think that's a runner at all. Okay, lovely stuff. Well, we're going to leave the Ronan McCarthy and Cork football chat there for now. Coming up after the break, we're previewing the All-Ireland Camogie final. Thanks a million to Jur for joining us and going through all of that with us. You can hear Jur on the Women in Sport podcast every week on the Big Red Bench on Red FM. You can also read his work in the Southern Star, The Echo and The Examiner, and you can follow him on social media at Jur McCarthy. 74. We all have dreams, but dreams by their very nature can be difficult to achieve. That's where Access Credit Union comes in. Whether it's going to college, owning a car or building your dream home, your local credit union can help you to fulfil your dreams. Access Credit Union. Funding dreams for over 50 years. On Sunday in Croke Park, the Cork Camogie team will go in search of their first All-Ireland title since 2018 when they take on Galway. Paddy Murray's Cork side beat Kilkenny at the semi-final stage. And in a few moments, we're going to be joined by ex-Cork star Sarah O'Donovan. But before that, we're just going to touch on some of the main talking points ahead of Sunday's game. And I guess the biggest one was the fact that Orla Cronin of Enniskeen was sent off in the All-Ireland semi-final win against Kilkenny and we still don't know whether or not she's going to be available for selection on Sunday. As is often the case on All-Ireland final week there is an appeals process in place so we'll know maybe by Friday Kieran. have you heard anything as to where we stand in relation to Orla's inclusion? Cork uh, Camogie are contesting the red card, but that's no surprise. You want a player like Orla Cronin lining out in, Ar- in an All Ireland final. Like she's a key player on this Cork team, um, an All Star in 2020. If she lines out, Cork have a better chance against Galway. If she's missing, it really does hurt Cork's chances of winning a first All Ireland since 2018. So she was reported for for striking an opponent. So that's the the charge she's contesting this week. Um, no update as of yet. Even if it's even if she doesn't win her first appeal, there is then for the appeal route she can go down this week. So I expect this to to go on in the background um, over the next couple of days. The, the hope is Orla Cronin will line out for Cork because, like I said, if she, if she's there, it gives Cork a real fighting chance of. Um, of becoming all Ireland champions again. Yeah, I think another big point worth touching on is the fact that Cork's captain, Linda Collins, was left out of the semi final starting team, but obviously came on and was the hero. So, where do you think she stands in Paddy Murray's mind? Are we likely to see Linda from the start after her heroics, or as I see in her quotes this week, she as any good captain would say, she is happy to play her part wherever necessary. So what's your own sense of Linda's position? It's almost linked in a way to Orla Cronin's red card. Let's say Orla is suspended and she's missing. That could mean that Linda comes straight into the starting 15. Um, again, against Kilkenny, she, she was dropped to the bench and she was disappointed, but she did come on and she scored that injured high winning point and she was very strong for the 13-14 minutes that, that she um, that she was on the pitch. Of course she wants to start and of course she wants Orla Cronin there as well. 
Um, so it's a it's, it's a tough one for the management team. It's almost like the debate we had with Shane Kingston in the lead up to the the Cork and Limerick uh, men's hurling final. Kingston came on in the semi final against Kilkenny, did a superb job. Oh God, should Cork start him? Should they hold him back on the bench for a bit of impact? They they started him. Um, so the Cork Camogie management team, Paddy Murray and Co. Have a similar debate this week and um, put Norla Cronin's availability to one side. Do they start Linda Collins and hope she makes an impact from the start? Or do they just hold her in reserve and hope the game is in the melting pot? Didn't bring her on because she's quite she's a deceptively fast player. For Park is a big open pitch and um, she can cause a bit of damage up there. And almost unseen too is the lot of work that Linda does. She sets up a lot of scores as well. So if you bring her off the bench, she has the character, the maturity and the composure to make her presence felt and make an impact. But ideally, she'd like to start as well. So like I said, at the start, I think it's linked to Orla Cronin's availability. OK, then, Kieran, let's hear now from ex-Cork star Sarah O'Donovan, who you caught up with to preview Sunday's game. Delighted now to join on the Star Sport podcast by Sarah O'Donovan, a decorated Cork Camogie player. Um, in, in years gone by, who went on to spread the Cork Camogie gospel to Dublin with great success. Welcome to the podcast, Sarah. Good afternoon. Delighted to be here. Uh, we're going to look ahead to Sunday's All Ireland Senior Camogie final, Cork taken on Galway. And we're going to base this chat on the presumption that Orla Cronin is going to miss the game. Um, Orla got sent off straight with a card against Kilkenny in the semi final the weekend before last. Um, okay, there might be things going on in the background now to hopefully get Orla to the final on Sunday. But as of now, Orla Cronin will not be um, lining up for Cork on Sunday. How big a loss will that be? Huge. Uh, So impressive against Kilkenny. She tracks back the field. She transitions the play. And Paddy alluded to that in his post-match interview, that they lost their shape in the third quarter against Kilkenny and, and kind of allowed them back in, allowed them to get the goal, that they lost that transition. Now, Orla was on the field for that and I and you know she had done so many positive things prior to and afterwards so for her not to be there at all I wonder will Cork struggle with the transition from the half back line to the half forward line and you know crucially getting ball into Amy O'Connor that's what you'll miss when Orla is not on the field so hard to mark Megan Farrell I thought did quite well against uh, her not so much on her, but in that space and that she held the centre back position and she came out with a lot of ball, but I think she really struggled with Orla. So big shoes to fill for whoever comes in for Orla on Sunday. We're looking at this final two on Sunday, Sarah. Like I suppose it's important to note this is Cork's first all Ireland final since 2018. And in the last two years, it's been Galway and Kilkenny both years fighting it out. So the landscape has changed, let's say from 2014 to 2018, Cork were in the final every year and they were the team to beat. Like I said there, the landscape has changed. It has been Kilkenny last year, then Galway the year before. So heading into Sunday's final with Orla Cronin missing and considering that Galway and Kilkenny have been the, 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 the top two teams, it's fair to say that Galway are the favourites. Galway would be the favourites based on that narrative, but based on the games that I saw, I felt that Cork and Kilkenny was a much higher spec of game, if we were talking about a car. Um, I I just really liked the movement, the touch, the skill set of both teams. And look, Parky Keeve last year, there was only a point in it between Cork and Kilkenny. So it's nearly to Cork's disadvantage that they've met Kilkenny in two semi-finals when both teams have played so well. Galway have probably had the easier side of the draw in both semi-finals when you consider that they didn't have to play Kilkenny or Cork in the semi-finals previously. So I would say Kilkenny will be disappointed that they didn't meet Cork in the final, if that makes sense. Going on that too, like you said there, Sarah, you were at the two semi-finals in Cork Park recently and that was uh, Cork for Kilkenny by point. Linda Collins coming off the bench with a bit of magic in three minutes into injury time. But her semi-final then, it was Galway got the better of Tipperary. Um, you alluded to there that the, the Cork Kilkenny game was a, was a higher standard of of, of, of hurling that day. Um, for Cork fans listening to this, give us a couple of reasons to hang some hope ahead of, on, ahead of Sunday's final. How and why can Cork beat this Galway team? I suppose what I didn't get to talk about last week on News Talk during the game, just because of the pace of the reporting, was the defence. Cork's defence were outstanding last week. Uh, So, so positive. Their ability to carry the ball, the way they look up, the way they transition the ball through the lines. They're very safe. 
right? It's A to B. Um, they don't like giving away possession. In the forward line, the likes of Katrina Mackey, the work rate out of the girls, not allowing Kilkenny to come out with the ball, stopping that distribution that was so good in previous games, it, it meant that the Kilkenny forwards were getting 50-50 ball at best and the Cork backs were, you know, I suppose, equal to them in, in that regard. Outside of that, Chloe Sigerson, what a hurler, you know, outrageous scores from out around the 45 and even back as far as the 65. You cannot give her a chance, you know, um, as a as an opposition, Galway will be so hyper aware of when she gets the ball that she's just going to open up the shoulders and, and you know, and, and it's anything's possible from there. What I liked as well is obviously Hannah Looney. And you know what? Uh, Hannah's had so much work done in the last number of months trying to keep football and camogie kind of going equally. And I really thought against Kilkenny, that energy that she has was back. It, it was evident and she was breaking through the lines. And I think now, you know, hunger will bring her another step again and you'll see her carrying more ball out of the backs and obviously cognizant that Orla mightn't be available I think Hannah will nearly step into that role of transitioning the play so lots of positives for Cork um, and a real hunger there that I hadn't seen in the last two years. Silver lining to the Cork footballers recently lost to me in the Ireland semi-final was the likes of Hannah, Mirka, Helen, Libby, They've been able to concentrate on Komogi for the last couple of weeks. And it's, it's probably no coincidence, too, that May had a very good game a, a, against Kilkenny. Libby was solid. Libby's there. Henna had a, had a very good game. And when you're looking at that Cork win over Kilkenny, and you can see the celebrations after how much it meant for Cork to, to beat the Detroit and the All-Ireland champions, that could be a very important turning point for, for, this, for this team as well, because this team has been, you could... I know people don't like that phrase in transition, but they have been over the last couple of years. They've lost some big leaders. So to get a result like that in a big game against Kilkenny, they get through to the final. You'd hope that they can kick on now. I would agree. Um, I was very impressed also with Saoirse McCarthy, you know, to open the scoring, first score of the game, you know, set the standard. Laura Hayes uh, has been excellent through the campaign. Transitional players uh, that you're talking about, trying to replace like the Jim O'Connor, Breach, Corkery, Orla Cotter. Those players are hard to replace, you know. So I think over the last 10 years, Paddy Murray has had an incredibly hard job because he's had an you know, abundance of talent that has slowly seeped out of, of the group. And he's had to replace it. And you know what? It, it has taken a, this group of players the bones of three years to kind of find their feet. But beating the All-Ireland champions and the league champions this year has to be a big confidence boost. And they won't fear Galway. I, you know, I think in previous years, over the last couple of years, refereeing decisions have gone against Cork and um, against Galway. And I think on a much more wide open pitch, on a very public uh, day, All-Ireland final day, it should be um, a much better and fairer uh, level playing field. Like I mentioned, like this team has been in transition and I think Ashley Thompson could be the oldest player on, on the car team right now, but it's the likes of Laura Tracy, um, Amy O'Connor or Orla Cronin. These are, these are the women who've stepped up to become the new leaders. And how important was that for, for this team? That Because there's some huge shoes to fill, like Aoife Murray, Breach, my God, like they're legends of the game. So these... Um, when they were there, the likes of Orla and Amy, and they were younger players, but no, they had no choice but to step up, but they have. Yeah, and look, I, I think Cork have benefited from the fact that Orla and Gemma only went very recently. Um, crucially, Katrina Mackey and Pamela Mackey have stayed in the fold. And then it's allowed the likes of Orla Cronin and Amy O'Connor to, I suppose, experience that level of pressure that's not at the height of, of being the leaders, being the captains, but gradually get into the, get into those roles. So it, there's been a happy marriage between the experienced players kind of seeing out the end of days and then the new players slowly, slowly coming up through the ranks and stepping up. But you also have the likes of Linda Collins, you know, um, and I suppose the last day, that score that she got to, to win the game for Cork, so crucial, but so controlled and so calm. And that only al aligns to the fact that she's been around the squad since 2017. That's four years, you know, so everyone's kind of done their apprenticeship and now they're ready to, to take over the mantle. That was very telling Linda Cotton's score. Like, obviously, she was disappointed not to be starting that game. Uh, she was given a role on the day to come off the bench and try and make an impact. And, and she did just that. And it shows 
let alone Linda's character, but the character of this Cork team right now. Two minutes to go, two points down against Kilkenny. They could have dropped their heads, but they didn't. Instead, they drove on and they won the game in dramatic fashion. So, again, that's very encouraging, the character in this Cork team right now. Yes, and again, I didn't have an opportunity to speak about Amy O'Connor the last day. You know, the scoreboard mightn't have been lit up with Amy's scores, but she was winning frees. She was mm-hmm. constantly, constantly upsetting the Kilkenny backline. And I suppose as a corner forward or a full forward, you'll have some miserable days where you won't get the bounce of the ball. But if you're in their ear and you're constantly a threat, they're so distracted by you that they can't progress up the field and things like transition uh, play doesn't doesn't work then because you know, you're, you're a constant distraction to them. So everybody contributed to that win from one to 18. What are the key areas for you on Sunday? So like, where do Cork need to come out on top to beat the Scottish side? I suppose crucially at midfield, um, Neve Kilkenny and Aoife O'Donoghue the last day were outstanding for Galway. Um, Aoife O'Donoghue's gone into wing forward, a, a new role for her in that we've previously seen her play midfield. But, She is so lively. You know, I made the point that she was probably doing the job of two or three players because she was literally winning the ball out of the field. She was nearly in corner forward, getting the score afterwards. She was just constantly rotating around kind of that 50, 60 yards of space. Neve Kilkenny then is so direct. As soon as she wins the ball, she's like a train, you know. Um, I I think in midfield, which is which is obviously the only team probably that have the legs for it is 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 Ashling. Thompson, her distribution was so good the last day against Kilkenny. She's spraying the ball 40, 50 yards. That kind of takes the impetus away from the likes of Neve Kilkenny because the ball has gone out far away so quickly that, you know, she's not going to have that same impact that she had against Tipperary. So closing down those two players will go a lot, go very far in terms of Cork winning this game. We're talking about, let's say, Cork match winners for a second. We mentioned Amy O'Connor, the Mackies, Hannah Looney. Um, could there be a, a surprise match winner in, in this Cork team? I'm looking at some of the younger guns, like Akira Sullivan from Newstown, who's done great stuff this year. I think her second year on the panel. Fiona Keating, another young gun who's from Courses, um, do very well at centre forward. Could a, could a young player like that, do you think, kind of really step up and, and grab this match on Sunday? Well, in previous years, Orla Crona did just that, you know, against Kilkenny and, and was the player of the match. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility. Sometimes when teams identify players like Amy O'Connor, like the Mackies, and, and kind of focus all of their attention on them as match winners and Linda Collins as well, it's an opportunity for another player to tip, step in no more than Aoife Doyle for Kilkenny last December. She probably wasn't the eye catcher, you know, in terms of the player that was being targeted by Galway and she ended up being the player of the match so certainly for Kira and Fiona and Saoirse uh, there's a big opportunity there to to, to make their mark uh, a Walter Walsh style scenario perhaps that Kilkenny had a couple of years ago and much like the debate we had over Shane Kingston before the, the Cork Limerick Hurling final a, a couple of weeks back Linda Collins made such an impact coming off the bench for Cork um, does Paddy Murray hold in reserve again and hope for similar impact or do you start Linda Collins on Sunday? The, the fact that Orla won't be playing probably means that Linda will be parachuted in. But to my mind, Linda should have always been playing. I suppose what you don't notice with Linda when the cameras aren't on the field is that Linda brings so many players into the game with her runs and, and her movement and the way she gets into a pocket and gives a quick, tidy pass. When we played uh, Cork in the championship there earlier in the in the summer, um, I, just, I just really like Linda's movement. Uh, I think she really brings... Katrina Mackey into the game, she brings Amy into the game and she brought Orla into the game as well and no more so with her solo run through to bring uh, Katrina into the game for a possible goal for Cork late on against Kilkenny Uh, that's the kind of work that Linda does that's that's not necessarily flashy or or all consuming but it's very very effective so I was surprised she wasn't starting and I'll hope that she'll she'll get the nod now on Sunday And to nail your colours to the mess what's your prediction for Sunday Sarah? After watching the two games, I can't see anything but Cork winning this game. I will say that from Galway's point of view, I thought Siobhan McGrath, Orla McGrath and Ailish O'Reilly were quiet for Galway the last day against Tipperary. So I would be slow to suggest that the Galway forward line can't fire. um, But I think the Cork defence will have enough for them. Fingers crossed. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years.
Now, Kieran, before we wrap up today's show, we're as always going to preview this week's Southern Star Sports section. I'm assuming there's a lot of Camogie, a lot of Ronan McCarthy talk. What can readers expect? Yeah, we have a 28-page sports section on the way this Thursday morning, and um, it's chock a block with GAA. Of course, we've been um, previewing the Camogie final. I have an interview with Libby Coppinger from St. Cullum's, who I caught up with earlier this week to, to get her thoughts on what the week of an All Ireland final is like in her, her new position at fullback. We also have interviews with Maeve Cahillan and Paddy Murray. And I checked in too with Sarah Hayes from Corsi Rovers. She's a Corsi's legend. She played in nine All Ireland senior finals. She won five. I just wanted to get her take on the three courses players on, on the court panel. So that's Linda Collins, Saoirse McCarthy and Fiona Keating. And also Sarah O'Donovan runs through the tactical side of the game with Joe McCarthy. So there's a lot there in, in our All-Ireland Camogie final preview. Um, of course, Ronan McCarthy, like we talked about earlier, he is gone. It's time for a change. So uh, my back page column is looking at Ronan's reign and looking at the at the different contenders for the hot seat. Now, last weekend too was the opening weekend of the county championships and we had loads on, on this um, big spread in air Oaks win against against Carberry Rangers and Clannacilty beat Ireland. You had a good win for Castlehaven against Newcestown. The, the derby between Skib and Bandon finished level. There was a defeat for Dawn. East Castlehaven Bear won. Edrigal won. There was a hell of a lot of football played last weekend in the county championships and we have it all in, in Thursday's Southern Star. We have 12 pages alone on the county championship. So that's well worth picking up for that. Also the Irish Offshore Championships the one championships are held in Bantry last weekend, so we have a report on that and the local winners. So there's a there's, there's a lot going on in, in this week, Southern Star. A lot of GA this week too, Jack, but it's that time of year the championships are kicking off. And also worth mentioning that Kill Maccabee are still alive in the Carberry Junior A Football Championship. They beat St. Columns in their must-win game last weekend. It was returned to form for the Kill Max. It was returned to form for Damien Gore. He kicked nine points as 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 Quebec could be advanced to the third round. So we've that and a lot, lot more in Thursday Southern Star. And just to throw out there, Kieran, for your column, you mentioned you're going to be looking at Ronan's reign. And just to flag with you, in case you weren't aware, the current champion of the WWE wrestling, his name is Roman Reigns. So if you can't work that into your headline, I can't help you anymore. Anyway, let's leave that reference to wrestling for now. We might do another wrestling reference next week who knows watch this space but anyway thanks for listening to the star sport podcast we'll be back at the same time next week if you enjoy these shows please make sure to rate review and subscribe on apple podcasts spotify youtube or wherever you get your podcasts Salon tomel